my name is Andrew, and um, well, this is uh, uh, I'm going to talk uh, to talk about how I worked managing build and integration infrastructure of uh, Debian derivative. So, uh, first of all, some bits about myself. I started contributing to Debian in uh, 2007. Um, some years later, in 2013, I became a Debian developer. And two years later, I became, uh, uh, I started working for Collabora, uh, a company which does open source consultancy, basically, and sponsored this conference. So um, uh, I only started doing, doing actual packaging in 2010, and it was basically, it started as a joke. Uh, a, f a friend of mine uh, claimed, you, ca I, you cannot package something for Debian in uh, half an hour, and I tried to prove him wrong. <laughs> Uh, well, I, d I didn't manage to package uh, that package in half an hour, but still uh, I've got into, well, Debian packaging. I never attempted to run any bits of real Debian infrastructure. Uh, I've only used mini D install to publish uh, binary packages to, to for my users to test. So I barely uh, know how to properly uh, manage real Debian infrastructure. Um, but then uh, I started working on a project in Collabora called Apertis. Um, this is a, a Debian derivative, which is uh, tailored to automotive needs. And um, basically, uh, originally it was developed to run on uh, infotainment systems, basically machines which uh, are do the navigation and play radio for you, but uh, it, is, it is in fact fit for quite a wide, wide variety of electronic devices in automotive area. So um, this project, uh, it provides quite a lot of infrastructure for uh, code hosting, it provides its own code review tools, package build services, uh, image generation services, and uh, also automatic testing infrastructure. And um, well, even though it is a Debian derivative, it, it is based mostly on Ubuntu, not directly on Debian. Even though uh, it takes several packages directly from Debian, for example, systemd. Uh, and on top of all of that, it provides a set of uh, its own uh, software frame frameworks, packages, and APIs for automotive needs. Um, so uh, we, as I mentioned, we use systemd for uh, process uh, tracking. Uh, we heavily use AppArmor to enforce policies on applications. Uh, and uh, even, well, we take AppArmor from Ubuntu, but we extend it with policies for lots of applications already on Ubuntu and Debian, and also to our own applications. and. Uh, uh, Packages. Mm, we use Flatpak thanks to Simon McVitie uh, for uh, safe and efficient deployments of applications in there. Uh, uh, we use Wayland for graphics, so there's no more Xorg since I think last year. And uh, well, obviously, we use Streamer for multimedia. So, um, well, some people may say, why do we use Ubuntu and some bits of Debian and not just Debian? Uh, which is, well, a universal operating system, and it is entirely free software, and it has been developed by a community of individuals and not companies, which often happens. Well, all of those things are great, but um, unfortunately, stable moves a bit too slowly for us. And once it's released, the changes to, the, uh, to stable are minim minimal, and um, it quickly becomes uh, very out outdated. Um, and then when the new release uh, is out, the changes are often quite significant. Uh, on the other hand, unstable breaks a bit too often for us to base on it, uh, whereas uh, Ubuntu, um, they do releases more often, and uh, even in LTS, they uh, push up the, uh, updates more often, and 
it moves slightly faster than Debian, Debian stable. And uh, even then, they have quite a large install base, so uh, it, they have lots of testing. Um, uh, yeah. So now a bit, a bit about infrastructure we have in Apertis. So um, um, the core of this infrastructure is Open Build Service, OBS, uh, which is thanks to unreleased package for Debian, by the way. Uh, so uh, we um, uh, store Apertis specific sources in Git, and um, at the moment we see Git, but it, there is a plan to use uh, GitLab for this. Uh, um, from Git, uh, Apache specific sources go into OBS, where uh, the rest of, of packages are stored. Mostly it's packages from Ubuntu and from Debian, which go there, there directly or with some modifications. Uh, OBS builds packages, builds binary packages, and uh, they go into apt compatible uh, package repositories. Then they get installed into images, which can be used directly on the devices. Um, we use Jenkins to uh, manage image builds and uh, other um, continuous integration uh, paths, and um, we heavily rely on Fabricator uh, for project management and uh, backtracking. And we also use Lava for testing the actual images on actual devices. So uh, something about uh, open build service. Um, just like um, uh, as built, uh, OBS uses its own code to uh, create ch uh, routes in which uh, they, the package is being built in a clean, well-defined environment. Um, so OBS resolves uh, dependencies every time from scratch and uh, installs build dependencies and uh, build the package. Uh, it stores all packages in a version con con uh, revision controlled manner. So uh, you can see how the package has evolved. You can check out any older version if it's needed, revert uh, and build it again. And um, actually, it resembles subversion in many, many ways, this package storage. Uh, um, it provides um, access control. So um, um, Basically, for every project, every package, you can uh, choose whether it is accessible for reading, writing, and so on. Uh, packages may have maintain a role assigned to them, so uh, one user can uh, manage it in a, uh, uh, ma manage this uh, package uh, similar to what we have in Debian, um, and. Uh, uh, even if a user doesn't have right access to, to a certain package, uh, there's a, um, a branching feature. So uh, a user can clone uh, the uh, package into his own uh, sandbox, develop the package there, and then submit a merge request. So um, even uh, non-maintainers can contribute changes and test them. Um, and well, this branching uh, feature uh, it very much also resembles um, the subversion branching and merging uh, because it, it is based on directory-like namespaces. So um, uh, in OBS, uh, Apertis is split into multiple components. Uh, unlike Debian, there's no main contrib and non-free. Uh, the split is done differently. Um, every component is in its own uh, OBS project. So uh, the, the component split is target development, HMI, SDK, and snapshots. And there's also helper libs. So um, target are packages which are getting installed on the device itself. Uh, development are mostly um, additional packages which are needed to build, build what's in target. SDK are tools which are needed only for development, and they are installed into special SDK images, uh, where users can also install additional packages from helper libs. Um, HMI is a special component with a software for uh, 
human machine interface packages, uh, uh, which is what is used for infotain infotainment systems. And finally, snapshots is a special component which is used to store uh, and build um, development versions, vers versions of packages right from the Git. So um, in OBS, you can specify dependencies between components. So when uh, packages from one of the components are built, uh, they may depend on, on packages from other uh, components. So for example, development uses target. Well, actually, it's other way around. It's a ta uh, uh, well, in fact, uh, development can use packages from target, but uh, a target uses packages from development to, uh, to be built. And SDK depends on development. Um, so uh, you can select multiple components when you are is, uh, on the live system, but the SDK uh, sort of assumes you have also development and target. Um, uh, so um, uh, when um, OBS builds a package, it is getting published into internal OBS repositories, which are normally you have just one per project. Those, pro uh, those repos repositories are not in apt format, so we use Reprepro to make them accessible to apt. Um, those uh, internal repositories are used by OBS to build other packages within the same project. So um, when a package is being built and published into this repository, it can be used as a build dependency for other packages in the same uh, project. And uh, this makes it very easy to uh, do full rebuilds. You just add an additional repository, which is not published into app repositories. Uh, and it, which depends on the main repo uh, repository, uh, so packages can be rebuilt, and the results of the build can be discarded. So uh, it's easy to detect uh, when uh, detect situations when some packages stopped building after some time because of changes in their dependencies or in build order or some other for some other reasons. Right, so um, to work with packages, we've, got, uh, we've developed uh, a number of workflows, uh, which are different for packages imported from Ubuntu and Debian, uh, and for our own packages. So, uh, well, packages from uh, Ubuntu and Debian, to which we don't do any changes at all, they are imported to uh, OBS, either manually or uh, using uh, OBS feature, basically, we, you can copy packages from elsewhere. Um, if the, package, uh, the changes to the packages are quite minimal, which happens often, we uh, just commit changes directly in OBS, uh, keeping um, patches in DEP3 format. And uh, well, all of those modified versions, they have a prefix similar to, similar to what Ubuntu does. But it, instead of Ubuntu 1, Ubuntu, Ubuntu 3, uh, we get uh, we put CO1, CO2, and so on. And we also use the fork of Ubuntu's merge omatic tool called Merge Omisk uh, to pull new updates from Ubuntu LTS. So uh, it can handle simple merges and uh, automatically rebase our changes on top of what Ubuntu has. And uh, certain packages are kept in Git to make the merges easier. Um, and then um, in Git, uh, we use both uh, Debian uh, standards and uh, our own approach. So uh, for non purchase packages, we use De uh, Deb 14. Uh, we keep upstream code in uh, upstream branches and uh, our purchase specific branches for uh, packaging of of the, uh, for Apertis packaging, and uh, when we release a new version of the package, we add an Apertis version tag. And we use Gilb uh, git build package and uh, its uh, gbp pq command to manage patches. Uh, but for native Apertis packages, we uh, use a slightly different approach. So um, the, um, we don't keep uh, Debian packaging and the source code separate. We keep the both on uh, on master branch, 
Um, and uh, when we create uh, a, a new release, um, to be able to uh, push updates for the previous re released uh, uh, distribution, we create a, a release a specific branch on which we put changes specific only to that release. And uh, mm, we use two sets of tags, uh, apertus specific tags for changes specific to the packaging and uh, uh, just the version tags to releases of the upstream code. So uh, a normal upstream release is usually two tags, one just version number and the, uh, the other is apertus version number CO1. And uh, if later on we need to do some changes in packaging only, we just add uh, Debian packaging tags. And if we change the actual code or apply patches, uh, we uh, bump the uh, upstream ver uh, version number. So um, we have a Jenkins instance, which uh, every time uh, something is committed to Git, it uh, picks the, uh, the top commit of, uh, of a branch and builds it in a controlled environment, which is not the same as OBS. Uh, this environment is updated, uh, at the moment it is updated manually from time to time uh, when uh, the build dependency change. Um, because we, uh, we use this approach because we didn't want for potential um, unrelated build failures to cause uh, failures to build our code. Well, if, for example, bash becomes uninstallable, you, we, we don't want our code to fail to build because of that. So when the bit succeeds, uh, uh, Jenkins generates a source package which is submitted to OBS and is committed to the snapshot component. OBS builds the package once again in, uh, in a clean truth. And uh, if the build succeeds and uh, it was a release, which means it was tagged as a release, it submits a uh, uh, merge request on OBS to the component from which the package originally came. Um, Jenkins uses a uh, build snapshot script written by Simon. Um, uh, mostly, uh, this script has been used to uh, well to build packages and to create source packages for uploads to the uh, OBS. This script is probably going to get packaged for Debian as well because it is useful not only for Apertis and it has m many other uses, but uh, so far it's not yet been submitted. Um, so, and um, we also uh, y uh, have a um, CI procedure for new patches which uh, are submitted at Fabricator. So after, before uh, they, they are being reviewed by actual humans, uh, uh, Jenkins applies them to the uh, top of the branch and builds them in the same environment. And if the build, uh, the build fails, the submitter uh, can immediately see that there's something wrong and they need to change the code. And, and that's basically it, uh, about packaging. Now, image builds. Um, also controlled by Jenkins. Uh, the same Jenkins instance as uh, is used for packages and the rest. Uh, we use Linaro image tools, um, which uh, build images in a multi-stage process, in which we sep separate hardware component, uh, hardware specific components of uh, hardware independent components. Um, if there's someone familiar with how Linaro image tools work, basically this means that first of all we have um, uh, something called OSPAX and hardware packs. So OSPAC is basically a uh, part of the root file system with um, packages which are specific to this architecture but not this specific device. So they can be shared by multiple devices running on the same architecture. For example, MX6Q uh, uh, Sabrelite and Raspberry Pi. And the uh, hardware pack is uh, also part of root file system where uh, device-specific files are installed, like firmware or device-specific U-boot or maybe uh, device-specific kernel. 
and um, uh, they get combined, uh, producing a set of images based on this architecture for uh, every device. So we've g uh, we create multiple OSPACs for different types of images. Uh, it is, well, as you can see on, the, uh, on this slide, it's at least target and development. Uh, there's also SDK image and uh, a number of other images. Uh, and um, since we support three architectures at the moment, which is IMD64, ARM64, and 32-bit ARM, ARMHF, uh, we produce quite a lot of them. So um, image build process uh, builds hardware packs and OS packs, uh, and then combines them uh, into actual images, which can be run on the devices. Uh, generates these routes for, for the SDK. SDK is based at the moment on Eclipse, and it allows users, to, well, developers, develop applications in a more user-friendly way. So uh, they need sysroots of, uh, of the system for this. So after sysroots are built, um, mm, Jenkins triggers test on uh, the Lava image, or the Lava instance, so the images are installed onto the devices and being tested and verified that they actually boot and uh, do something useful. Um, we are, in fact, we use auto package test infrastructure for part, oh, not only this infrastructure, but we, we also use it for certain packages. Mm, and uh, well, and then a, spe a special job scans the uh, package change logs in the image and uh, closes the bugs which are fixed by new package versions. So there are lots of challenges uh, in maintaining um, all of that Without, uh, and using something else than um, Deb uh, standard Debian inf infrastructure. Uh, f I'm, I'm going to start from, from the bottom because, uh, first of all, OBS isn't quite like as built, and it builds packages in a slightly different way, which often doesn't matter. But um, at times, uh, there's some difference which makes some packages to fail to build from, from source. At the same time, those, the same packages build quite fine in Debian. Um, uh, one, one of such differences is that OBS ignores essential flag, and it needs manual overrides to specify which packages are needed to be pre-installed before uh, any build dependencies are installed. Um, sometimes we mess up those, and uh, packages build, uh, fail to build in uh, very funny and interesting ways. Uh, well, um, next uh, thing which is sometimes difficult uh, is that uh, Mergematic can handle simple package mergers when uh, uh, changes do not conflict with each other. But when they do, it fails and, and uh, it forces the user to, or the maintainer to uh, resolve conflicts manually. And this is quite difficult because uh, it doesn't provide any meaningful conflict description or, well, it provides something to start with, but it's quite difficult. Um, using Git helps, because Git can solve many of the conflicts uh, mom can't, but then you can put the whole distribution into Git. Well, you can, but it's quite difficult, and um, uh, we don't have many packages in Git. It's about a couple of dozens packages which we maintain. Uh, well changes, uh, well, um, packages from Debian and Ubuntu with our own changes, but uh, we can't put everything there. And then um, when uh, packages are removed from Debian or Ubuntu, it's a bit difficult to um, keep track of packages removed and uh, remove them in a purchase as well. Um, so... Yeah, um, we, as, as I mentioned previously, we plan to uh, provide GitLab to make it easier for uh, potential contributors to, uh, to contribute, because at the moment it's just a SIGIT instance, and it's not easy to... Uh, basically, uh, it's not easy for, you, for contributors to create their own forks of packages, do work, then submit it back. They need to go through 
all official ways of contributing. Um, it, it, uh, there's now a work in progress to automate the release creation because it involves quite a lot of manual work, updating packages, uh, creating new branches, and uh, this is something I'm going to automate. And there's also work in progress to stop using Linaro image tools because they are quite difficult to maintain. They sometimes fail in, uh, uh, in part because of uh, specific bugs in Linux kernel, which are very difficult to trace and uh, fix. So uh, now um, we have a custom tool which is much simpler and uh, handles image creation much better. Uh, yeah, and um, yeah, basically we're going to shift focus to become a common platform for more automotive systems, not just infotainment as it was until now, uh, so that apparatus can be used for a wide range of devices. And uh, basically, uh, this is it. If you are interested in apparatus, there's the web page. You can go and learn more about it. And, uh, well, um, this is it. <laughs> Questions? Answers? <laughs> Proposals? Have you considered using that testing as a middle ground between stable and unstable? Sorry? Sort of a, a, have you considered using testing as a sort of rolling release between a stable and unstable? Well, testing is better than unstable, definitely. But, well, uh, first of all, the decision w wasn't mine <laughs> to use Ubuntu. But I can see uh, certain challenges in using testing as well because, well, it, it's, in many ways it's, it's basically uh, unstable delayed slightly. So, um, Still changes, uh, the things change there quite often and quite a lot. We need something more stable than testing, but more lively than stable. Fair enough. If I can expand on that a bit. Um, for a while, we were using um, non LTS Ubuntu. So it was um, updating like every six months. And um, we decided that was um, essentially spending too much time rebasing. Um, it was too much of a moving target, and uh, we weren't getting enough benefit from the, the more re from the more frequent updates to justify it. So we dropped down to using only the LTS releases. Yeah, that, that's another uh, another reason. Uh, yeah, rebasing to new releases and or well, not even new releases, just pulling updates from the same release. Uh, within its support cycle is quite a lot of work. And with testing it would be um, quite, quite a cons constant work which needs to be done and um, doesn't often bring benefit. Benefits. A beautiful thing. Hi. Hi. Um, so I'm working on Ubuntu. Uh, Sometimes I'm interested in some of the thing. You want me to stand up? Oh, sorry, I didn't know you were trying to film me. Um, so it sounds like you do most of your testing on the on the um, images that you produce, not on the packages like the individual package uploads. Is that is that right? Sorry. Most of the testing you do is based on the the actual like produced image product rather than mm -hmm. the packages on the packaging yep. level. Wondering if you've thought about using something like Brittany and or like running auto package tests on the packages as you upload them, or if you've ever done that before. Um, we, so as a bit of history, in Ubuntu we introduced these like maybe f maybe four years ago or so. And um, so previous to that, we were, uh, developers would just upload their stuff straight into the development release, you know, kind of like, kind of like we still have in Unstable in Debian now, right? And you get problems with uh, like arch skew or just like random broken packages or like half done transitions making it through to your, you know, essentially the product you're trying to give to your users. For us, the development release for you, like maybe you get broken images from this from time to time if you have transitions half done. Wondering if you ever thought about like introducing more of the kind of Debian like testing like release management stuff into your into your workflow? 
Well, we uh, first of all, uh, well, we also run the package test, the well, uh, Debian rules test, basically, uh, and uh, since we've uh, done integration of auto package test into our well test infrastructure recently, we can technically run tests for the whole well already existing tests in other packages which come from Ubuntu and Debian. And there was a plan to do that, but it, it's just uh, we basically need to somehow separate those tests from the rest of 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 of, of what we have. So that uh, it, it's just quite a lot of work to deal with, you know, failures in, in which happen due to changes which were introduced in Ubuntu or Debian. Right. So, so yeah, we th th there were plans to do this. It just I think it's. It's been implemented, but it, we haven't switched it on. Right. So we do this in Ubuntu. We, uh, when we introduced this, we started redirecting uploads to a new suite. So sort of like... Sorry? We started redirecting uploads to a new suite in Ubuntu. That's what we call them. So um, instead of developers uploading directly to the development release, their, their uploads are automatically redirected to a staging area. Mm -hmm. And then we have Brittany sort of running. And, and only once Brittany thinks the packages are good enough, are they then copied into the into the um, thing that we build the release from. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, for you, that would be like okay. when somebody uploads to an OBS, you'd, you'd upload it into some other area, and then you would, when the te automated mm -hmm. tests are passed, you would then migrate them into another repository, which is the one that you build your product from. And right, so if someone it, fails the test, it, it, it doesn't get into the It's just held there, yeah, and then you can see the results, and then somebody has to fix it before it makes it through to the state, to the place you build the products from. I don't okay. know if that's interesting to you, but for us, I mean, I think, I feel, I feel like it's given us a lot more confidence in the things that we're producing. Oh yeah. Especially in the pre you know in the presence of tests, like at least we know that they've gone green, or somebody has looked at them and overridden them. It's just interesting. Okay. Okay. Anybody else want the mic? If I can just uh, respond to that point, um, we had. Um, so we 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 start we started running more we started running more um auto package tests and things like that um for for the stuff we pull in from Debian and Ubuntu um but the problem with that is not all test failures are equal you know we we have a lot of packages in the distribution that um some of them if they fail it's like well um now the product is broken and some mm -hmm. of them if the tests fail it's like well do we even care uh we're using like 1% of this package if the test failure is in the other 99%, it's, re it's really not, not even worth our time to identify it, let alone fix it. So we have to be quite, um, we, we, ha we have to be quite careful about um, making sure that we only test things that we would even want to fix and that, that, we, do that we don't um, waste developer time on debugging things that don't actually have a significant impact. Oh, yeah. I personally spent quite a lot of time trying to figure out why certain packages failed. Well, there are some build dependencies of packages we use, but basically they are part of SDK image only. Uh, those were basically, basically uh, packages written in Java, and some of them would randomly fail because of test failures. So uh, after spending quite a lot of time in figuring out why the tests failed, and they failed because, well, one of the packages started failing because it is suddenly 2017, and the package was designed to, well, it, it was not designed to fail in 2017, but they never thought it will live that long, and some test was not expecting the new Unix time or something like this. So uh, at sometimes disabling tests in some leaf packages helps, in fact. Um, yeah, because we, you, we don't need to test all of the packages, which are just build dependencies for something we don't use all the time. If we had enough developer time to make all the tests for all the packages pass, it would be amazing. Yeah. But we just don't. So we have to prioritize. So anything else? Okay, thank you then. Um, thanks for coming. And that's it.